There has been so much going on with Spider-Man in the MCU right now, specifically about Spider-Man 4. We've heard a lot of different reports like Venom is going to be in Spider-Man 4 and even Null. Null is going to be the main villain of Venom 3, The Last Dance, and it looks like the ending might, this is not confirmed yet, but might show us Venom fleeing to the MCU because he was there in the post credit scene for Venom Let There Be Carnage and the post credit scene for Spider-Man No Way Home before he came back and Noel might follow him there. And this is reportedly what Sony wants, and now it looks like Sony and Marvel Studios are once again in negotiations over Spider-Man's contract in the MCU. However, this time is fairly different. Unlike most times when we talk about Sony and Marvel, it's usually bad. This time, it sounds like the negotiations between the two studios are actually pretty good and could lead to a really great future for Spider-Man in the MCU. But it does seem like that might come at a slight cost for Marvel Studios. And that slight cost might be losing a little bit control over the story of Spider-Man 4. And there's a lot we have to dive into today. Now, this all started yesterday when the insider Daniel RPK, who has had a really great track record recently with all of the scoops, stated that Sony and Marvel right now are negotiating a new deal that would involve Spider-Man appearing in more Marvel projects with Feige overseeing the solo films. Now this is incredibly interesting because I did a video a couple of days ago that talked about how Sony might have finally understood that their Spider-Man universe without Spider-Man isn't actually working and really won't work without Spider-Man. However, them having Spider-Man in the MCU is making them a lot of money and giving them a lot of success for the character. So they'd be foolish to pull Tom Holland's Spider-Man or just Spider-Man in general out of the MCU, which led me to start thinking that perhaps Sony might kind of be done with their Spider-Man universe, at least for now. And this new report points to that as well. Now, this is really, really exciting news. We could see Spider-Man show up in a lot more projects than originally we thought he was going to be in. And honestly, this is a great deal for both studios. Spider-Man is arguably the most popular superhero there is out there. If not, one of the biggest superheroes out there, definitely. And we've known for a while that Marvel Studios wanted to make Tom Holland Spider-Man one of the main characters of the overall multiverse saga in general, and of course be a main character of Doomsday and Secret Wars. Clearly, Marvel has wanted to use him a lot, and now this new deal would allow them to use him even more. And it really benefit Sony because they're going to make money every time Spider-Man shows up. And if Marvel Studios handles him correctly, and they have pretty much entirely for the most part in the MCU already, then the success of Spider-Man is the success of Sony. And they're probably going to make more money this way than they would if they made, let's say, another Madam Web film. This new deal really does point to the fact that Sony has realized that their movies haven't really succeeded at all at the box office or with fans. And I would just be shocked if they haven't seen some of the comments online that state that Sony should just kind of give Marvel Studios the rights to use all of these characters in the MCU and collect money that way. They don't have to give them the full rights to the characters, as in sell them the rights, but they can license them to the MCU and allow these awesome characters to be used actually with Spider-Man. Because that's the big problem that they might have realized. These characters don't really work unless Spider-Man is there as well because they are Spider-Man characters. But now we might see a lot more Spider-Man in the MCU, which is a great thing. But this does take us back to Spider-Man 4. Four. If you constantly stay up to date with the MCU and Spider-Man, I'm sure you've heard a bunch of different reports about Spider-Man 4. You might have heard them from me, and trust me, I've heard a lot more than I've actually reported on. But if you've been keeping up to date, you've probably heard mainly two different things about Spider-Man 4. One is that Marvel wanted it to be a somewhat grounded movie, and two is that Sony wanted it to be a pretty big multiverse film. Well, it looks like this new deal is also going to pretty much discuss just that. What is Spider-Man 4 actually going to be about? Now, it's pretty easy to see how Sony would want Spider-Man 4 to be a big multiverse movie. If they can put more Spider-Man in it, like Toby and Andrew's Spider-Man, to come back for this next movie, in theory, it would make more money. Then you throw in Venom and Null and just the multiverse kind of starting to fall apart going into Avengers Doomsday and Secret Wars. It's pretty easy to see how you could do all of that. But will it work? Or are they better off going a grounded story 
story with some grounded villains and Kingpin being the overall arching villain of a few different Spider-Man movies and now possibly other movies and shows that Spider-Man could show up in. That is seemingly another big part of this deal. Spider-Man being allowed to show up in more shows and movies than just the ones that they had already had planned, the solo Spider-Man films and the Avengers films. It essentially sounds like they do indeed want Tom Holland Spider-Man to be the new face of the MCU, essentially taking over the place of Iron Man. If you think about Iron Man's overall arching presence in the MCU, even after he died in Spider-Man Far From Home, and him showing up in projects like Spider-Man Homecoming and Captain America Civil War, that is essentially what we could get with Spider-Man. Spider-Man could show up in Daredevil. He could show up in Wonder Man. He could get a cameo in Captain America Brave New World. Now, those have already been filmed, but those are good examples of what they could do in the future. He could show up in other projects that we wouldn't really expect him to show up in, but since he's going to be such a main character and possibly the leader of the new Avengers team in the MCU, it would make sense to see him kind of all throughout the MCU in areas that make sense, specifically in New York. Now, as far as all of the different reports about what Spider-Man 4 is going to be, all of them could kind of be correct because like I said, and like we know, two different things are kind of wanted for this movie right now and they are writing the script as we speak and they've gotten the director, Destin Daniel Cretton, and they're forming it all right now. So yes, some insiders might hear that, hey, they're gonna do one thing one day and then the next day, might be thinking about doing something different. And that all could be true because right now the story isn't finished. It's fluid. It's constantly changing. But the good news about all of this is it does sound like Kevin Feige himself is going to have a lot more control over what he does with Spider-Man. However, there might be kind of a catch to this like I mentioned, and this isn't confirmed, but it's just a rumor for now, that Sony might want their Spider-Man 4 movie to be exactly what they want it to be, a big multiversal film, throw Venom in there, throw Nolan there, maybe the other Spider-Man at the end of the movie. Then after Spider-Man 4, they let Kevin Feige and the MCU essentially do what they want with Spider-Man. It's kind of like, hey, give us what we want for Spider-Man 4, and then we'll let you do Spider-Man however you want in the future MCU movies, and hey, you can use them more than we originally negotiated. Not a terrible deal when you're thinking about the future of the MCU. However, when you think about Spider-Man 4, you do want Kevin Feige to have a say in it. And he always will be because it's the MCU. He's not just gonna let Sony walk all over him, but I'm sure they can find a pretty good medium. I'm sure they could compromise to make Spider-Man 4 kind of what they both want, but make the overall story still a great movie. And I do think Spider-Man 4 could bring something different than we've seen in the MCU with Spider-Man so far, and that is the action, the web slinging, the fighting. I think Destin Daniel Cretton did an amazing job with Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and I think he's going to bring that into Spider-Man, so I'm really excited for that. I hope Sony doesn't interfere too much, but let me know what you think. Should Marvel Studios kind of give in to Sony a little bit for Spider-Man 4, making it a bit more of a multiverse film than they wanted it to be, to be able to essentially have a lot more freedom with Spider-Man in future films? Please let me know your thoughts about that in the comments down below. Do you you want the big multiverse film or the grounded street level film or is there a happy medium that you think we can get to let me know your thoughts don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on spider-man in the mcu and of course the mcu in general you can also find us on apple Podcasts, spotify instagram twitter and facebook and as always thank you all so much for watching wolf wolf